patriots in? That is the question. Stephen A., you have the answer. Oh, my goodness. Skip Bayless, they're in a world of trouble. And from this perspective, I say this. When you've got Storks and Fleming, two rookies starting in your offensive line, and you let go a Logan Mankin, similar to what you did with Richard Seymour years ago, um, I definitely think that you have a huge, huge issue. Number one, because you don't have as much protection as you would like to have for Tom Brady. Number two, because you can't run the football as effectively as you customarily did. Number three, you also have an issue because whether it's Josh McDaniels, whether it's Bill Belichick himself or whatever, there's an imbalance in terms of running the passing. I mean, they passed almost twice as much as they ran the football. And if you didn't establish a running game against the Kansas City Chiefs, obviously that's going to spell some trouble for you. But then when you take that and you combine that with Andy Reid, who did an exceptional job of play calling last night. Um, they, you had Jamal Charles. He had 92 yards rushing on 18 carries. You had Davis. He had 107 yards on six carries. He averaged 6.7 yards a carry. They were running the ball. They were allowed to get into play action. Alex Smith, obviously, in the season opener against Tennessee, they were they were pass happy yep. and he threw three interceptions they made sure that they had a balance attack they spread the ball around Dwayne Bow received the ball Kelsey received the ball Charles was getting the ball as well in the passing game so Andy Reid did an exceptional job of spreading the ball around really really discombobulating the New England Patriots making sure that they didn't get to key on any one individual any one player because they spread the ball around they did exactly what the New England Patriots are accustomed to doing but Tom Brady doesn't seem to be on target overthrowing under mm -hmm throwing passes did that to Julian Edelman on one interception you know he got the strip sack uh, you know you, you know in, in their own territory mm -hmm. which led to a touchdown uh, for Kansas City you just look at the New England Patriots right now their personnel is clearly in question there is no way around that but at the same time coaching for on a rare occasion mm -hmm. appears to be a question mark mm -hmm. because Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniel do not, do not appear to be on their A game in mm -hmm. terms of their play calling. Yep. And as a result, it played right in the Kansas City's hands. I don't believe that the New England Patriots are this bad, but they're clearly not as good as we expected them to be. I don't believe Kansas City is this good, but the potential is there for them to be this good. I just think they were going up against an inferior New England Patriots squad at this time. Six, seven weeks from now, probably going to be a different story. But at this juncture, the New England Patriots don't seem to be the New England Patriots. Okay, so how much trouble are they in then? They're in a world of trouble. Like miss the playoffs trouble? No, 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 no. See, and when I say a world of trouble, I'm measuring them in terms of our Super Bowl prognostications. Oh, Remember, yeah. I predicted oh, thank you that for they were Bringing that up. Yeah. I remember I predicted that they're going to the Super Bowl. They're going to represent the AFC. That prediction is in trouble. I think they're you not took it one more step. They're not you had them winning at the Super That's Bowl. That's right, I did. Uh -oh. I don't I don't have I don't have them missing the playoffs, but that's by default. It's because they're in the AFC East. Okay, I, I want to start off what I'm saying. Now we're in B roll. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I, I'm going to blame last night once again on you. What? You did this to me, and, and I'm not kidding about this. You know how you have those moments in your life where, where you got something in your head, and you you just know the Patriots are going to win the AFC yeah. after all the the great additions they made through the offseason. Sure. And all of a sudden, when I least expected it, in our prediction show, you come right on top of my pick of New England gets to the Super Bowl, and you go me one better. You say New England's going to win the Super Bowl. And I had that moment. You know how you have those moments in your life when yeah. you just know something just changed dramatically for the worse? That was that moment. I said, I am doomed. I said you it, on, said the it on the show. And I knew it. Mm -hmm. and, and so what have we seen so far? Sure New England has been like Florida State in college football, where you keep looking on paper at all these players returning and you say, they can't be this bad. Florida State doesn't play up to its talent. New England even though they're only two and two, has not played up to its talent. And I'm, seriously, I'm blaming it on you. But I'm going to try to break the hex by starting off my answer to this question with a prediction. New England will beat the undefeated Cincinnati Bengals next Sunday night oh. in Foxborough. Let me stop they right will. from speaking uh -oh. another yes. second. <laughs> I'm going to give you a moment to try and change that pick. No. Because I was going to pick them to beat Cincinnati too.
So now you know what? what? I, now, I, I'm are you going to say I jinxed him no. now? <laughs> Is that what you're going to say? Did, did you just make that up on the I swear fly? You, no, <laughs> did, did you just decide no, that at no, this moment? Not at all. Because not, you're capable of all. doing that. Not at all. I, yes, I am capable of doing yeah. it, and I'm usually right, but not in this particular Okay, this system. time I'm going to hang in there because I'm sick and tired today of hearing everyone say Tom Brady is washed up yeah. and New England is finished yeah. and New England's going to miss the playoffs. I don't believe that for and one the, second. Well, the reason I don't, the reason they're not in grave danger is the last time I checked in their division, Buffalo just changed quarterbacks. Right. Am I right? The I'm Jets doing. fans are calling for a quarterback change. Am I right? Okay. And last week, it appeared to me oh. that Joe Philbin in Miami was actually sort of going back and forth considering a quarterback change before he finally said, well, you're okay. I'm going to go with Ryan Tannehill. So those are three combustible situations. Mm -hmm. And I think, are the Patriots still in the AFC East? They are. I think they are. So, they so are. okay. They're going to win the AFC East. Now, let's get back to what happened last night. I believe that the Kansas City Chiefs in that stadium before that crowd would have beaten, you, you name it, the, the 1995 Dallas Cowboys, who I thought were one of the best teams I ever covered. Mm -hmm. They would have beaten this year's Seattle. They would have beaten the Bengals or the undefeated Arizona Cardinals. Whoever it was, whoever had walked into that stadium last night where they reset the decibel record. And I don't think enough is made of that. We always hear all the hype and mystique about Seattle's 12th man. Well, what about Arrowhead? You, we're not giving them enough credit for how loud it gets in there. Right? I mean, it, it's crazy loud in that stadium, and they have had a long history of pulling off big wins or big upsets on Monday or Sunday night football in that stadium. It might have a lot to do with the fact that they haven't won a playoff game since 1994. Okay, well, that's fine. But, but and again, back to how good is, uh, is Kansas City? On opening day, it was daytime in that stadium. They lost to Tennessee 26 to 10. Jake Locker lit them up. Yeah. And, and Alex Smith threw three interceptions that day. So, no, they're not that good because now they've got to go to San Francisco on a short week. And they are seven and a half point underdogs at San Francisco. So let's keep that in perspective. Mm -hmm. But last night, they look like world beaters. What, what did they do wrong last night? Did they do anything wrong? No, they didn't do anything wrong. They played games of their lives against a team that they were obviously fearful of. And Andy Reid coached one of the best games I've ever seen coach because, my God, all that motion stuff and that fake reverse stuff that they came out with that I'd never seen before, it had the Patriots off balance from the start. Now, back to the Patriots. Yep. Why did you pick them to win the Super Bowl? <laughs> because you look at this and you say, Will Fork and Mayo are coming back. They added Darrell Revis to a secondary. Remember, Casey Joyner, the football scientist, said before the year, be, be aware here because by the end of the year, this secondary could be better than the Legion of Boom. That's how you, know, you look at it and you say, Dennard, who couldn't play last night, but McCordy and Kyle Arrington and Logan Ryan, they're loaded in the secondary. And Ninkovich and Chandler Jones and Jamie Collins, Dante Hightower, this is really a good team. They just did, like in the first half, they came out without urgency, without tenacity. And I'm saying, who are these guys? What, do they think they can just roll the New England helmets out there? And all of a sudden the Chiefs will say, we give up. You guys can win. You know, we, no, they're not going to do that at Arrowhead on a, a Monday night. And then I look at the offense and I say, oh, Brady doesn't have any weapons. Well, he didn't have any last year. He got them to the AFC championship game with the very same group, plus a Brandon LaFell. What did he catch? Six for 119 last night yeah. and a touchdown. I know it all came late, a lot of right. time in garbage time, but still, I thought LaFell would help this group. But clearly, uh, if you can explain to me, Whatever happened to Kenbrell Tompkins? Whatever happened to Aaron Dobson? Both were inactive. I don't know if they're hurt because they never tell us exactly what's going on. Are they in the doghouse? Are they in Brady's doghouse? I don't know. Danny Amendola is definitely in Tom Brady's doghouse. Yeah. And, I, and I'm hearing this from people inside that they just don't get along. Brady's got no respect for him. Uh, he doesn't play hurt enough. He's not on the same page. Well, that's, uh, that, that, that has a okay. lot to do with it, which is yeah. something that I told you when they okay. acquired Danny. Okay. I said his but, but it didn't seem that equation. bad last year because he had a couple of games that were pretty good. The game on well, Sunday Well, you're getting night to know somebody. Atlanta. You're yeah. getting to know somebody. But okay, maybe too time, well. <laughs> but, but, well, I'm saying, but when in crunch time, when, it, when you're really called upon yeah. to step up, especially in the sport of football, there's a difference between being injured and being hurt. And a lot of times, guys expect you to play hurt. Because yep. they don't consider you injured per se. That's correct. Because they're thinking okay. we're out here. Are you are you with us? Right. And if you're the quarterback, if you're as fiery and as competitive and as elite yep. as Tom Brady and cares much about winning and being successful as Tom Brady, and you're looking at a dude 
that does not show up when you need him. And you're accustomed to having okay. a dude who did in right. Wes Welker. It's a problem. And I don't think Amendola is the brightest bulb from a football IQ really? perspective. And, and you know how Tom Brady is demanding of you to be where you're supposed to be at the split second you're supposed to be there. So they're not on any page at all. So that's a big loss because it degenerated last night with the noise that they are in the shotgun in the first half for, for uh, 23 snaps. I'm sorry, 17 snaps. 17 out of 23. Yes. They're in the shotgun Which was with the mistake, noise. The you, you can't hear. You can't block anybody. You don't know when the snap is. And he's trying to throw every pass, it seemed to me, to Danny Amendola. If he's triple covered, I'm still going to throw it to Danny Amendola. I'm, I'm sorry, to, to Julian, so Edelman. Julian Edelman. Sorry, Julian yeah. Edelman. It's yeah. like Edelman, Edelman. And the last time I checked, is Edelman in the same sentence with Randy Moss? No Does he way. have anything to do with no. Randy Moss? No, thank you very much. So I, I, I'm like, what, what are you thinking? It's like he did it have come... over 100 receptions last year. Though. He did, and he was great. And and I kept telling you last year, I kept making the case for Tom Brady being the MVP yeah. because he was throwing to this group minus much of the year Gronkowski, who by the way did have one late catch from Garoppolo and in a bulldoze touchdown. So maybe he's starting to play his way back into shape. So that's going to be a plus. Yes. But with this same group last year. Ken Burrell had his moments. Aaron Dobson had his moments. But but Tom Brady was the MVP to me yeah, because he got that group to the, the AFC Championship yeah, 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 game. Yeah, but you're looking at it from that angle. I look at it from this, Skip. Most of it was with play action. Tom Brady, I never saw him in, in 23 snaps. Yeah. 17 was from yeah, the shotgun right. position. I didn't see that before. That play action matters. And you will look at Ridley averaging 5.6 yards a carry no last night. Now, again, all I'm saying to you is just five carries, 28 yards. I'm looking at it from the perspective that maybe, just maybe, if you came out there running the football, exercised and employed play action, yep. then you would be in a position where you wouldn't be target practice if you're Tom Brady. You got, uh, listen, especially when you're a defense and you got Tom Bailey yep. in Houston and those sure. boys, you're going to find yourself in a situation with that crowd as loud as they were, mm -hmm. roaring, hype for Monday night football, going up against a team that was in the AFC Championship game last year, right. Bill Belichick, Tom Brady. Yeah. You are going to be hyped. The last thing you want to do is give the impression that you are willing to be target practice. When you get into the shotgun, into the shotgun sure. formation, and you are a stationary target like Tom Brady is because he's no scrambler, yep. you are invited Fighting these totally dudes agree. to get hyped about it, and that's going to make them even more hyped than they than they were to start out the game. I agree. And I think that's even a, that's though Tom Bali was offside on the strip. I understand play, that. That's fine. He was that's offside, fine. but yeah, it I'm is fine. what it is. All okay. I'm saying to you is that if you're the New England Patriots, I got to put this on coaching to some strong degree because why would you try to employ the shotgun offense, given indications that you had a pass a, pass an attack that was forthcoming, and your primary receiver was LaFell. I know LaFell can play. But listen, he's not bad, but he was no Steve Smith in no, Carolina all of not. those years. No. And so I'm looking at it from the perspective that, yeah, you're good, you're talented, but who are you really? Okay. You know, are you really better than Kimbrell Tompkins? Are you really better than Aaron Dobson? Uh, I mean, why are you that oh, guy? I don't I'm just know. saying. Okay, I, I don't last, know. last quick thought. Yeah, and I'm going to ask him a question. Okay. <laughs> I, I know that after the the game on ESPN, Steve Young and Trent Dilfer made a really big deal of Tom Brady getting yanked after his pick six interception. Mm -hmm. And this is just me. I, I was happy that he was yanked because I wanted to see him protected because I didn't want to see him go out and get hurt in a meaningless garbage time game. And it's like you need to save him from himself. Mm -hmm. You don't want to send him back out there and make, because it's it's going to go from bad to worse. So I was I was okay with Bill Belichick and and Tom Brady said after the game, well it wasn't my you know they they pulled me out. He didn't want to come out. Well who would want to come out? But I thought it was a good move well, to well, take I, him out. I didn't think it was a bad move either. But my response to Steve Young and Dilfer, who by the way are doing an outstanding they're job, they're great my teammates. They're fantastic. Yep. Along with Ray Lewis, let me just say this. Even if Bill Belichick had elected to take Tom Brady out because it was a poor performance, so what? Okay. Sometimes you need even stars yep. need yeah. that, that 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 source of inspiration. Yep. Sure. You need to be jolted just a touch. You do. Yep. This belief that oh my God, you're you're so marquee, you're such a star that you can never be yanked. Sometimes. Yep. You got to mess with somebody like that from time to time just to remind them they got to get it. They got to get it done, too. Uh, Skip talked about uh, after the game, but before the game, Trent and Steve were very adamant, Stephen A., about getting Tom.